I'm going to show you how to export motion properties from After Effects so you can hand them to developers to help them build your designs. I'm Ryan, and this is Motion Methods. Alright, here we are in After Effects. As you can see, I've got this example of an iOS control center and how it animates in and how it animates out. And as you can see, there's, there's a lot of stuff going on here. A lot of individually animated parts, and this can be really tedious to document all of these individual animations in order to hand off to development. So what I'm going to show you is how you can get this information exported out of After Effects so you can just, you know, hand it off to developers and call it a day. All right, to get started, you're going to want to download one of my favorite After Effects scripts called Inspector Spacetime. It was created by the talented motion designer Adam Pluff, who also builds After Effects tools. All right, so once you've downloaded the script, just open it up and copy the inspector spacetime.jsx file and drop it in applications, Adobe After Effects, scripts, script UI panels, and paste it here. I already have it here, so I don't need to do that. And then head back over to After Effects. If you have After Effects already open, just make sure to quit it and then start it back up again or else the script might not appear. So go under Window and Inspector Spacetime. You can see it pops up over here on the right. Just a note, I'm having some issues here where the UI of the script itself kind of just disappears. Seems like a bug. Anyway, what you need to know is you choose whether you want your position data to be displayed as coordinates or as distance. If you want it as distance, you choose DP, and then you choose what resolution you're working in. So I'm working in one times resolution, so I'll choose one. Then just go to a composition that has some keyframes, for example, this one here, and then select a couple keyframes and hit the big button. And here you go. This window pops up with all of the data for the keyframes that you selected. So the, the layer name, as you can see here, the, um, the property type, the delay, so it starts at zero times zero, so the delay is zero milliseconds. The duration for this, these two keyframes is 250 milliseconds. The value is 335 dp, so it goes down 335, as you can see. These values in the parentheses are actually the easing values. So if I go up into the graph editor, you can see this is how that information is displayed there. So th which essentially creates these Bezier curves that you can use for development. So if I clear this and then select all the layers, I'm just going to hit tilde so you can see all of them and then select all these keyframes, tilt it again, and hit the button. And now you can see I have this list of all of the properties, the animated properties, and their values, their timings, their easing values, their property types. And then I can copy this out and put it in a document, share it with an exported video, as well as any other documentation that I would want to provide. Just keep in mind this only works for whatever keyframes you have selected. So, for example, this composition has, if I go into it, it's a nested composition with all of these layers, these 12 layers, with all of these keyframes here. So none of these keyframes are actually part of that original set. So you just wanna make sure when you're creating these specs that you include the nested comp information as well as any other information and hand off to development. Just a couple more things here. So if I say select these keyframes, hit the button, I got the specs here. Now there's this option to create a side panel. So if I click that, 
it duplicates the composition that you were in and adds a side panel. And if I zoom in here, you can see that information is actually pasted here, which is pretty handy. Um, it's handy if you have enough space in the vertical panel to be able to read see it all. But if you have, for example, if I just undo that and select all of these keyframes and then create the side panel again, it still duplicates it and creates a side panel, but not all the keyframes are actually listed there. So you have a lot of data that's lost, but it's pretty cool if you don't have that many keyframes. The other thing is you can add a counter. So if I hit this, create counter, see on the top left here, if I just solo it out. It's got this counter that shows you the live time in milliseconds. So that's handy. So you can export your video with a timestamp over top of it. Hopefully this will improve your motion design workflow. If you like this video, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share it with anyone you think might benefit from it. As always, thanks for watching.